Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I'm going to do a review on this watch that I just picked up about a month ago. Uh, I bought it off eBay, um, and ironically, I have pretty good luck with eBay, and I was buying before the uh, verification service was implemented, which I think is a, a, a nice service to have uh, for those who are, uh, you know, cautious uh, and to avoid scams because scams have happened on eBay in the past, but that minimizes it because obviously when it hits the Dayton, Ohio location where eBay contracted out to have them uh, authenticated prior to sending off to the uh, buyer, uh, that place is uh, doing tons of authentications with different models. Do, do they miss things? Yes. Uh, would they know every brand uh, I don't think so. I mean, I've heard a couple stories where a few things were let go, like uh, maybe one had a, a, a an aftermarket end link on, a, on an older Rolex, like an older Datejust. But, uh, you know, what I think they're authenticating is mostly the movement, the case, the the, the bulk of the thing of the watch. Uh, they know on a lot of vintage, a lot of parts could have been changed. So this watch being uh, the serial number dates it to a late, late, very late production, 1997, almost getting into 1998. So it was towards the end of it. So I did have some questions uh, and I had to do some research. If you look at that dial, it's a Swiss made. It doesn't have the T, Swiss made uh, T. Um, before I get into it, I should probably <laughs> go ahead and tell you what model it is. This is a Tudor uh, Tiger Prince uh, date chronograph, model 79280P. Uh, the P stands for polished top of lugs, uh, whereas the non-piece would be brushed. So, uh, and this more correlates to the uh, the this the Daytona that this kind of is I, w I wouldn't say a copy of, but it is obviously the more affordable Daytona in the Rolex line because Tudor is in the the Rolex uh, family. Uh, a matter of fact, it's so much so that uh, these years were just getting. This was the end of the end of the years where they were starting to use Rolex uh, sign crowns and stuff like that, but uh, in case backs and uh, some of the very older ones had Rolex uh, bands. And um, so, anyways, uh, but this is the Tudor Tiger 79280P. It is basically a 40 millimeter chronograph and. Uh, it took me a while to find the one I wanted, which was a white dial with the black uh, indices. Uh, that's the one I was looking for, but I wanted it on the Oyster uh, band. And most of these you see on the market uh, will have will have the Jubilee, the Tudor Jubilee, which is a little bit different from the Rolex Jubilee of the same era. This band is a 78400 reference, so it's it's very similar to the Rolex 78360. Oyster Oyster band that you would find on a lot of the um, the the '90s GMTs, uh, you know, with the standard clasp. So this is you know that's a 78360. This is a 78400. So you get it. It's just you know in the same family of numbering system. However, I this should be 316L stainless steel. Where I uh, that 78360 would be 904L uh, technically. So uh, that was a big criteria. I wanted it on the uh, oyster bracelet, and uh, I no doubt, no doubt. I, 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 when I was going for this one, I was looking for a kind of a close as I can get to a Daytona without spending Daytona money because this being a late production 1997, and I'll get into that a little bit of the things that I had to question. I'll get back to that subject. Uh, this one, uh, this you know, this would be in correlation with the same similar year production one six uh, one six five twenty Daytona, and you know yes the Daytona's got the uh, the the indices uh, the the number uh, I'm sorry the um, minutes hour and seconds at the three six nine this is you know because of the movement that's used the choice of the movement in this uh, this model it's um, at the six nine and twelve. Uh, which I like because it opens up the right hand side for the date. And I do like this feature of having the date. Uh, some of the things I like with this over better over the Daytona is that it's got the drilled lugs. Um, that I find very cool because I actually, as soon as I got this watch, uh, I took it off, took the bracelet off, put it in my ultrasonic cleaner with some detergent. And you could see all the gook uh, between the links. Um, just kind of melt away all the black junk, dead skin cells, and 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 I recommend that to anybody if you buy a uh, you know pre-owned watch, just to 
you know, take the band off and put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. And if you don't feel comfortable about taking the band off, bring it to a jeweler and have them do it for you and, and rinse it because you're getting all the, 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 uh, the abrasive debris and dead skin cells that are in between the pins and the screws that can wear those out and make your band, uh, stretch the all too, all too familiar stretch. Um, so some of the things that I was questioning when I looked at it is being a, being a late production 1997, it does say, if you look at that dial, it says Swiss made. Now, 98 was the year Rolex and Tudor switch uh, due to the ban of using uh, radioactive loom uh, tritium at the time. Uh, they switched to, to Luminova in 1998, which this one is. Now, so my question is, is, you know, why is this a 1997 with a, uh, again, a late production? So keep that in mind, uh, according to the serial number. Uh, why does this have a, a, a Luminova dial? And the thing is, is that uh, a lot of times when they're in production, they'll use the last of the parts and they'll switch to the, if they're doing a model change or some parts uh, changing like they did uh, uh, at the period, they would probably start using the Swiss made Luminova dials, which later turned into Super Luminova, but that's more of a branding thing. Uh, basically, those are the same looms. But so so that was my question. Was this, uh, which it did come with a, a, a uh, Tudor warranty service card from 2015. So the previous owner did acknowledge that he sent it in. I had a conversation with him and that's, he said he didn't have the crown change or anything. He did, just did a movement service, uh, no dial swap or anything. So uh, a couple of people on the forums that I'm on, watch forums that were Tudor, uh, big Tudor collectors say it's not unusual to see that or being a late production, seeing the uh, Rolex sign crowned uh, instead of the Tudor shield. It's just whatever parts, you know, they had when they were building it until they ran out, then they switched to the, to the next year's or the, you know, the model change uh, during the change of uh, transition when they were using, you know, different parts, they would start swapping them in. So it makes sense. Like I said, being a very late production, 1997, um, to have a Luminova dial instead of a T-Swiss made T uh, seen on the few previous years before this. So, uh, yeah, I wanted this watch for a couple of years and the prices at the time when I started looking at them were in the fours and fives. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking, well, if I if I were coming across a good deal, uh, being early retired, I didn't want to, you know, invest a lot of money into watches like I did when I was working, uh, building up my collection. I, it's kind of an agreement I made with myself uh, not to go out and buy expensive things, but I couldn't resist this because it was, it was actually a bargain. It, it was, uh, the, the, the owner after some best offers went back and forth, agreed to 3000, uh, free shipping included. However, eBay at the time was running their, their, their infrequent, they run them like occasionally throughout the year, the, their luxury watch, uh, uh, 10% or 300, it was like $300 off. So I got it for 2,700. So with, with taxes and free shipping, it was 29, like 29, 14, uh, shipped, which if, you know, anybody who shops this model will know that's about the cheapest you're going to find it. And, you know, it's, it's got, you know, typical wear marks on it. It's, uh, he had it, like I said, service in 2015. And I don't, I didn't forget to ask him if he had it polished, if, if he, or if he told, uh, Rolex, the service center that would have serviced it, uh, the, this tutor, uh, not to, um, not to uh, polish it. I'm not sure. I forgot to ask him that, but you know, it's got <clears throat> the typical uh, everyday wear marks, which I like. It's fine. Uh, I'm not really gonna. Uh, I don't even know if I would have it polish it out because I don't like the polishing. Like many collectors, I'd rather just keep them natural and just uh, enjoy the wear marks and stuff like that. So even if they're not put on by me, that's fine. Uh, because the watch still speaks of history, of a past history. So anyways, this has a Valju 7750, which is uh, basically a workhorse chronograph movement. It was used throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s uh, chronographs. So it's uh, it's easily serviced. You don't have to necessarily take it to a Rolex service center to have it, uh, you know, a maintenance service. I like I said this a million times, and I'm sorry if I repeat myself, but uh, I do my own watchmaking. So we'll this is keeping really good time. I put it on a chronograph when I have it. It's like plus seven seconds uh, for for a non, uh, you know, certified chronograph uh, movement. It's that's actually very good. So plus seven is totally fine. But when it starts running out, I'll do the movement service on myself. Um, but if I didn't do it myself and I was just somebody that didn't want to tinker around with watches, uh, 
getting this service would be a lot less expensive than getting a Daytona uh, of the same year, you know, the 16520 uh, service, because you're going to have to send it into uh, either either some specialty independents that do handle it. And if, you, if it needs parts, they have to have the, the ability to access parts or uh, you're going to send it to RSC and your, you know, your bill is going to be a lot more. But with this movement, of course, it's uh, it's it's less of an issue because it's a, uh, it's a common caliber chronograph that uh, most anybody can service, you know, and, and, and like many, like many, like a couple, well, I wouldn't say many, but like some brands, they'll take the, they'll buy the base movement or the, even the jeweled or decorated, the jeweling uh, decorated movement, which is this one. And then they'll put their insignia. This one says tutor on the rotor and uh, they'll do their minor modifications, whether that's adding, you know, a few more jewels or, uh, what have you to to uh, to make it a little bit more personalized to their own standard? So um, I'm gonna put it on my wrist here. I have an inch wrist, large wrist, like I've said before. Um, so I had to add a link to it, which I had. But um, since I've had it, it's really not left my wrist, uh, and which is ironic because I have a collection of Submariners and stuff that I've always uh, worn the most. But uh, for some reason, I'm really just you know. Well, I know why, because I've always wanted this one. But uh, uh, do I look down and think it's a Daytona? No. But I think it's uh, unique enough where it carries its own character uh, to have a lot of similarities to, D to Daytona. Nobody can deny that with the pushers and stuff like that and the Rolex, D you know, the DNA behind it. But uh, at the end of the day, it's not a Daytona or even, you know, would even claim to be so. Uh, but it's it's quite a, a quite an awesome watch. Uh, they're a little bit harder to find uh, with the Oyster band. There's a little dent right there from I don't know what the previous owner did if he just torqued the uh, torqued it inside the you know maybe he twisted his wrist or something like that or if it fell or on something or he bumped it against something. But I'll take that out without sanding it. I can actually straighten that dent out and just kind of brush it over uh, when I get to it. So great watch. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, definitely uh, satisf satisfies my needs for a chronograph. I did, like I said, I did. I don't know if I mentioned, I did the other review of the Omega Speedmaster JDM. You can go look at that video. That has the exact same 7750 base Belgeau movement. Uh, and, you know, Omega does a little bit of modifications in their own printing on that one too. But again, I'm not sure to what, to what degree they tweak them out or if they use them pretty much out of the box with, you know, with their rotors and stuff like that and maybe some additional signing on the base plate and stuff like that so um let me show you the function so uh do the start and stop here what good would it be showing a presentation video of this watch without doing the the uh chronograph function so there's the uh, pusher to start it let me see if i can get a good picture because i'm doing this at night so there's not a lot of light here okay so there's your timer your bezel uh, for calculating uh, uh, different units. I'm gonna hit the stop. Here's the reset, flyback reset. Very standard. So I mean, if you've had a watch with this uh, caliber, you know how it you know functions very similar. And I think it was a good choice for this watch. I mean, Breitling and other. You know, Omega was using this uh, in a lot of their models, so I think it was a perfect choice. It's a workhorse, easy to, easy to service movement. So, um, but again, you know, it's uh, I, I believe this will come up in a lot of people's searches, and I think I think with from what I've read, and I'm not really into the newest uh, Tudor chronograph, the Black Bay uh, two register chronograph that's available now. But I guess some are saying they're having problems finding that, and I thought, well. Here's, you know, here's a great option if you can't find one, um, you know, but I understand some is, you know, if the average price of these are going for around 4000 3500 to 4000 I think I just got very lucky. Uh, it, you know, like I said, it did go through the uh, inspection service with eBay and I know how to, you know, verify these. I took off the case back. I looked it over. It's definitely genuine. Um, and, you know, so, the, you know, so, I mean, I think I got it for quite a bargain, but I don't think. Most of the ones out there, if you're going to see them on an Oyster, are in the high threes, maybe fours. And if you got box and papers, or a little bit more. But, you know, then that begs the question is, if you know, somebody would just rather hold out and wait until, like, their local dealer got in a new uh, Heritage Black Bay uh, chronograph. And just because uh, it's around the same price, maybe 
maybe a few hundred more, but it's not that much more off from the from these used. So I know how most people are. They're going to want uh, uh, the newest watch. Where I'm the opposite. I rather collect the 80s and 90s and 70s and 60s uh, vintage and uh, neo vintage uh, watches. But I think this is going to do uh, my collection for a while. You know, I've said that before, but I ended up buying another watch. I bought a, uh, I bought like I said that Omega Speedmaster JDM model. And then I bought the uh, the Datejust, uh, two tone Datejust, which is you know uh, something I've been looking for. But if a deal comes up, then I jump on it. But uh, uh, I always tend to be a value shopper, <laughs> so when I, which is kind of ironic with luxury. Some people, when they buy a used model, they want to buy the best mintest example uh, they could, like of this one. If they're searching for, they wouldn't mind spending fifty five hundred dollars to get one with uh, you know a same same one with box and papers, you know, the warranty, uh, or the, you know, the punch papers, all the little, uh, doodads you get with the hang tag and stuff like that. They would want the minutest, mintest example. Whereas if I had something that perfect, I would not wear it. Uh, it would probably prohibit me. It'd make me feel like I, I couldn't wear it, uh, easily and you know avoid if it got nicked or or smacked against the door occasionally which you know you say is not going to happen but uh, you hope never happens but it eventually does happen because you're wearing on your wrist and that's just how things happen so having a little bit pre-scratch buying it in this condition is just perfect for me because one it gave me a, a better i think you know obviously this is why it was a little bit uh, lower price he originally wanted 3500 so he came down five so i don't know if he was you know pre-christmas he's buying out, buying gifts, or if this is just one he's just lost interest in, but, uh, uh, you know, he let it go for three. So uh, I figured maybe the reason why I was going for that low is because it was running out of, you know, spec, losing time quite a bit. But uh, I put it on my uh, 1000 chronograph and it, uh, like I said, about seven seconds fast. So that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good for a non-certified uh, movement. Uh, so yeah, I think I covered everything. So, uh, you know, viable option if you're interested in kind of a Daytona-ish uh, uh, type watch on a budget uh, with the Rolex DNA. I mean, you can't get no more closer in Rolex DNA than I would say this model because it's basically, you know, uh, the case is probably, I'd say, about one millimeter uh, uh, wider, uh, taller uh, than the Daytona. And, of course, Daytona's... Uh, the older Daytonas, like the Paul Newmans, had uh, drilled lug, uh, drilled through lugs, but uh, the one six five twenty did not. Uh, that's when they canceled it out, I believe, on the Daytona. But I just love those drilled lugs because just it's just reminiscent of the older era of Rolex. So, yeah, great watch. Uh, everything works great, and like I said, the uh, you know if you're holding out for the Oyster clasp, uh, you might have to wait a little bit longer because I do see them more on the. Uh, that generation of Tudor Jubilee, which, like I said, is a little bit different than the uh, than the Jubilee of Rolex because it's just got a different, a uh, little bit different design. And it looks nice, but I think if you're looking to try to approach the uh, Ro Rolex Daytona of the similar year, you're looking for the Oyster Band. So, yep. Uh, thanks, and please subscribe if you like my videos. I'm going to start doing some more. Uh, I've had some request videos. I'm going to be bringing one on watch lubrication uh, affordable solutions. Uh, I had some newer experiences. I'm going to share, uh, sources with where to, you know, pick those up for watchmaking and I'll be doing some more videos and posting them soon. Okay. Thanks and have a good Christmas.